Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. There's a scripture verse that says it's good for a man to serve the Lord from his youth onward. And we have a young man with us, Vincent Robert, who's re Roberts, who's really seeking to do that, to step out into the fray and to join us on the battlefield in sharing the, the good news of the Catholic Church and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll be right back with Vincent Roberts and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Our guest today is going to be Vincent Roberts. He is the he has a podcast called Out of the Cave as he ventures himself out of the cave into the into the will of God to share the good news and the gospel with Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ. I remember when I was 19 and I had an incredible conversion experience with the Lord. I just felt bad for anybody who wasn't uh, sitting next to someone in the university cafeteria because I was going to sit down and tell them they could have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. But there was one verse that came to me. I didn't really like it, actually. The verse was this in the book of Sirach. It's only in the Catholic Bible. My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. For the chosen man is proven in the furnace of much affliction. But fall into the hands of God and not into the fall into the hands of God and not in the hands of man, for who has ever trusted in God and been left forsaken? For as great as his majesty is, so too is his mercy. As great as his majesty is, think of about how great the cosmos is. All of the dark matter, all of the all of the black holes, all of the suns and the stars and the earth. Think about how great the universe is and think how much even greater is the creator of the creature, God. Let us fall into the hands of God and let him begin to do his work in you and to do his work through you. We have Vincent Robert with us today, 22 years old. His new podcast is, what's the name of your podcast, Vincent? Out of the Cave. What does that mean anyway? What do you, where did you get that description for your podcast? Well, thank you so much for having me here today. But uh, yeah, the description, the name, comes from the two names, the allegory of the cave from Plato. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Basically, uh, the idea is if you had somebody tied up their entire life in a cave and all they could see were images on a wall of the cave because behind them are these objects reflected by a fire, right? And all they know are, you know, the image of a vase, the they image of a bird. They can see people walking by, but only exactly. their shadow. They yes. have no idea there's something other than a shadow. Exactly. And the whole idea is for them, that's the most real thing. But one day somebody comes and unchains their, their you know, the, the idea is they're handcuffed. They can't move. They, all they know is this. They're un unhandcuffed and they can get up and they can see that there's the vase that is actually the thing that's making the shadow. Right. And it's the more real thing. And that's the, you know, the true, uh, the true thing. But then he kind of looks up and there's a faint glow coming farther down from the cave and, he starts heading towards that and as he gets closer it gets brighter and brighter and he steps out into the daylight and it's you know overwhelmingly bright and he can see even more real things trees for trees you know nature right all around him and and he kind of can barely look up and you see the light coming from the sun you can't even really look at it but the sunlight illuminates everything else right it gives light and the idea from a christian viewpoint is the sun is kind of like God, right? He, he shines light on all of creation and he's the highest form for Plato, the, the highest form of the true, the good. Um, but that was kind of the idea for the, the name is like in our pursuit of becoming uh, better men, we move towards the light and discover what's more and more real and become more and more real and authentic ourselves. Well, that's so well said, you know, for, for me, that out of the cave moment came at the moment I, I was prayed with it in the Catholic charismatic, uh, small little group and they prayed for me and I just, the, the power of the explosion of God's love just filled me. And I was like, wow, I've been living in a cave, you know, and I just wanted to tell everybody, Hey, you know, that the reality of Jesus Christ is so, so powerful. I know I tell my wife that Plato's forms, you know, his perfect forms, the perfect form for a woman is my wife. <laughs> that's, that's when it comes to Plato's forms. <laughs> Not only in, in her, her, her beauty, but her inner beauty too. She's so elegant and graceful and 
Beautiful. So, you know, out of the cave, think about, you know, the oldest cave that we know of in France. Are you familiar with that very old cave? Yeah, the one with the cave paintings. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, you're familiar with G.K. Chesterton's writing about that? No, I haven't read it. Yeah, he talks about how this, this old cave, the most ancient cave that we, we knew about it at his time, I think it probably still is, where we see the evidence of, of, of uh, primitive man uh, in the cave, and yet he's able to paint these beautiful, again, Plato, these beautiful forms of the, the deer that they've hunted and these beautiful arches of the, of, the, of the forms that they painted. And he saw in that cave the soul's upward yearning for beauty. You know, and also a desire to leave uh, a legacy, which means you're looking beyond your death to what's beyond my death. Will people remember me? Will I continue to exist? Uh, the beautiful upward yearning desire for justice. Even a thief doesn't want anybody to steal from him. A desire for love. Even someone that's never been loved wants to be loved, knows what love is. A desire for beauty. How many people have become Catholics because of the beauty of a cathedral or of a sculpture or of of a, a of music or of just the mass a desire for uh to really a desire for uh for truth and a desire to go home there's always just that feeling that we're not home and gk saw all of that in that original cave that we've discovered of the of primum to man it's quite something right like that there's these these higher ideals it's amazing to me that somebody like plato who didn't know but God, right, could get to the, that truth that there's something more real than what we're experiencing, right? Like there's the form of the square, something that we can't, we can imagine it, we can bring it out from the, you know, the metaphysical ether, but we can't even really make it, uh, you know, completely real. It's just out there, right? Well, <laughs> so you're he, was even, he was getting at it, that there's something that's more real. Yeah, there's something more real than even the forms. There's the, there's the giver of the forms. And, you know, even, uh, you know, Paul, definitely understood Plato when he talked about Jesus uh, being in the form of, you know, holding, being, being God, but not holding, not holding to the form and, and becoming a man for us, you know, not thinking equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself and became man. So we love our, we love our, our, we love our Aristotle and our Plato and I saw our Socrates. Some of the early church fathers called them saints. I mean, Socrates was a martyr for the sake of truth. Isn't it interesting how during 500 years before Christ, it was like God planted a, a standard of sound. Not saying that everything they had was perfect, but they had this emphasis on logic, like Aristotle's emphasis uh, uh, on truth, um, that was really preparing uh, for the gospel to come. So when the gospel came, fide et ratio, they both came, at the, the revelation of Christ's love, and, and the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of the Greeks coming together just forged this amalgam of, of the Catholic faith, the depth of Catholic teaching. We're talking with Vincent Roberts. His podcast is called Out of the Cave. i got to tell you guys, he lived pretty pretty much looks like a cave dweller. I bet his knuckles drag on the ground when, he, when he's doing when he's, <laughs> that. Uh, he's a young 22-year-old man that wants to share the gospel. If they want to find you, where can they find you, Vincent? The best place to reach me is Spotify. Um, I have another rival out there with the same name out of the cave. It's kind of a Marxist leaning podcast. So that's not me. Uh, you kind of got to do a little bit of digging to find me because it's a, it's a young podcast, but it's growing and we're getting out there, but you can pretty much find me on all the major hosting sites, iTunes, um, SoundCloud. Out of the cave with Vincent Roberts. You uh, can Spotify, Radio uh, Shack. What? Yeah. We want to tell the mama bears out there, Get his podcast and, and 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 send it to your to your younger your sons and your daughters. They'll dig on it. It's got a it's got a younger feel to it, but it's still very deep in uh, Catholic uh, teaching, philosophy, and and moral and doctrinal teaching. It's a great podcast. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind you guys: go to our website, deepadventure.com. Subscribe to our weekly email, and you will receive a, a free version of my le latest book, the free audio version of Deep Adventure, The Way of a Heroic Virtue. We'll be right back with our, our uh, co-adventure guide, Vincent Roberts. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. 
go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Vincent Roberts. His podcast is called Out of the Cave. Uh, but we want to invite the men out there to join the cave. We have a, a really incredible group of men uh, that are members of Bears Man Cave. Uh, it's a secret Facebook group, but I hesitate to say that because you can't join by going through Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com, click on the little warning button, and that warning button will take you to tell you how you can join the cave. But the cave is a place where like, like-minded men uh, who are all, uh, I always say we're all bozos on the same bus. We all have the same... We have, all have struggled with different issues in our lives. We all have the same questions, but we've also all had victories. And we want to uh, uh, educate each other, equip each other, mobilize each other uh, to share the gospel. And so many of the members of the cave have begun to develop their own caves. Like they'll have a group of men that maybe gather for cigars and whiskey every other week on the, on the back deck. And they, they share about their lives and their walk with Jesus. Some of them have started That Man Is You programs in their in their uh, diocese or churches others have getting their men together for uh, for um, you know breakfast or, or maybe they're doing the Exodus 90 challenge together we need our men to come together and one of the great places for you to start is to go to deepadventure.com and join Bears Man Cave women you can sign your men up for that you can you can uh, subscribe on their behalf let's get them rolling we're talking with, with Vincent Roberts his podcast is called out of the cave. Vincent, talk to us a little about your own personal journey. Sure, sure. So I was raised nominally Catholic. I wasn't, uh, you know, a very devout Catholic. I, you know, went to like Bible study, and Bible camp, things like that. But I came to realize when I was about 12 or 13, I was uh, doing Boy Scouts and kind of starting to realize that there was like a moral code uh, that I wanted to live by, right? and interesting I realized, that's yeah profound. I realized, that's profound yeah i was really take i was really um enamored with the like the scout law that that a man is supposed to be these things and i didn't know the word virtue really at the time but i knew that there was a code of character that men were supposed to live up to and it, it was difficult right like it was not something that was easy and it was it was kind of like a high aspiration like eagle scouts to me were like you know legends you know they were something that to aspire after so that was kind of my did first you become taste an eagle scout? Of like wow did you, there's did you become I, an eagle yeah, scout I got my eagle scout wow what, what was it what was in the, 2015 well what did it take to, to do that what was the biggest obstacles or challenges you had the biggest obstacle for me was swimming honestly i have been always a, a thin lanky kid and uh when you don't have a lot of fat in your bones you sink you tend to sink you're a sinker so, <laughs> you're a sinker i was a sinker yeah. So growing up, I was terrified of the water and I realized that I had to overcome this, this fear of swimming, fear of the water. And I had my uh, scout master who since passed away, fantastic guy, Jamie Gould, who's a Marine, ex-Marine. Um, wow. But he, he's a lifeguard and he, he spent every Sunday with me in the pool for at least two to three hours for like eight months straight until I passed that swimming merit badge and like got water confident. And he's just, yeah, he's does that, does that uh, amazing mean you're, man. Is that a lifeguard? 
Is that like a lifeguard type thing too, or is it basically swimming skills? It's just swimming skills. So it was, it was enough to get me to pass the, the swimming mare badge to learn actually how to swim, to, to carry my frame, my, you know, <laughs> my wow. lanky frame for, you know, however many laps, I think it's like six laps and then treading water. And for me, I was just like, so unable really? to do that when I began. Wow. And yeah. Wow. So he, he spent the time and he's, he was a man that I really looked up to in my early, early well, years. Let's talk yeah. about that for a second, because your generation it appears to me almost like a fatherless generation. There's a scripture verse in Malachi, I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. And when I see what's happening now, uh, falling into pornography, uh, the hookup culture, what we see happening in the streets, it, it, I just look and I go, these young men, so many of them, I don't think really have been fathered by good men. And you know, in Hawaii, we have the, the, the tradition of the uncle. You know, everyone that's 10 years, 15 years younger than me calls me Uncle Bear. Um, and so there's kind of like this fatherly, there's also this uncling that takes takes on. What do you what do you see in that? Is there any truth to what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. sure. Yeah. Without the, without the mentors I've had in my early life, I can see myself totally being in the hookup culture, doing drugs. Like, yeah, there was a, there was a point in my life where I was starting to go down that path. Like uh, in my high school years, I was coming towards the faith and also like still kind of had my foot in the other water. And yeah, it was, I could, I, a lot of my family, my cousins, you know, they went down that path and it was an easy, like, oh, wow. Yeah. I could have totally ended up there, but it was really through the the strong men in my life that directed me away from that and got me closer to our Lord. And there were, there were strong men like in the boy Scouts and also others that, that drew you closer to the Lord. You know, becoming a Christian work, being a living the life of Christian is definitely Countercultural, and we're swimming upstream. We're going up the mountain. It's easy to fall into all these other temptations, but to be a man of God takes true manly virtue, fortitude, and, and a commitment to doing, to, to letting our freedom be a freedom that's free from sin, that frees us from sin, and helps us to have the liberty to to really walk in the power of the Lord. What do you think the solution is for for your? What do we do? I mean, I feel so bad for so many of the young men. I feel I just really feel like they've. Maybe even if they had a, had a father, he wasn't that involved in their lives. I just really, I, I can understand that scripture verse. I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. What do we do? I really think it starts with responsibility. A lot of young guys in my generation have never had to take on serious responsibility or or confront that that they're if they're going to be a father one day that they're going to have to lead that family, support that family. Like uh, I remember I had friends in high school who all, all they wanted to do is play video games and my family wasn't incredibly privileged. We were all right. But like, I remember there was a lot of times where I was financially, it was, it was close. And, um, my dad, he was, I really appreciate that. He, he would share stuff like that with me. And he, he was a very hard worker. He'd be out of the house at like six and he'd get back at like seven, eight. So I really never saw him that much when I was a kid. He always took the time though to play catch with me like on the weekend. And really? if he got back and it was still a little light. Yeah. So my dad, my dad's a great guy and um, he's not a very strong Catholic, but his character really, really. Sh- he's a good, there's something about that life. good man who hasn't really um, found the depth of, of, of the reality of Jesus. And yet he builds a fortress around his family by living the, the cardinal virtues. He may not be living the theological virtues of faith, hope, and in love in that sense, but he's seeking justice. He's seeking fortitude. He's seeking self-mastery. He's seeking, um, I'm missing one of them, prudence. <laughs> so there's something to be said for the man that is a man of those four virtues that builds a solid wall for his family, a fortress. Yeah. Definitely. It's like the most important thing I think for that a man can do is, is grow in character, grow in the virtues, especially yeah, prudence. Prudence is the, the head of all virtue, right? So it leads all the other virtues. And yeah, if you don't have, if you don't have prudence, if you don't have a good head on your shoulders, I think it's a mix between education and ex- experience, a little bit of skill, you kind of get some of that prudence just by being in the world. But it's also like, you have to, you know, you have to do the reading, you have to do the, the growing on your own. You have to seek to be formed. And the catechism is a great place exactly. to do that. The, the practices of the church, the liturgy, the hours, you know, the, the the rosary, the Eucharist. So then, so you were young and you came to this realization that you, through through the scouts or really through the example of other men, that there's a choice to be made whether to live a life, a life of virtue or not. And how, what, how did that evolve into your eventually coming closer to the Lord? 
Yeah. So I guess it was, I was doing scouts and even my, in my scout troop, there was, there was not, um, there was men who were not following that example. And so, yeah, it was a clear, it was a clear choice. And I, I got really lucky and I had a friend, um, like in middle school, in fifth grade, sixth grade, who invited me to this, this leadership camp. And I kind of was obsessed from a young age. Like once I met scouting and like, I knew I wanted to, I was attracted to this, this virtue because virtue is attractive, right? Strong men are, are really attractive things. Like everybody's, everybody's interested in that John Wayne kind of characters. And I, yeah, I was, I was super drawn to that ideal. And he, he invited me to this, this leadership camp and that appealed to me, but he didn't really preach it as like a, a leadership camp. It was more like, Hey, there's all these fun games. We're going to play kickball and things like that. And so I was like, I don't really want to go to just a summer camp. Like, I'm not really interested. I was kind of a introvert guy. So I was not super big into like, oh, let's go to camp for just hanging out. Um, but he got me the, I think it was going into my eighth grade year. And he told me that there was going to be this revolutionary war battlefield tour. So I live in Massachusetts or I was, I grew up in Massachusetts. We were going to go to all the major battlefield sites. And I didn't know it at the time, but this was, this experience was going to be like a pivotal moment in my life uh, that totally, totally changed my trajectory. Like right then. And How old uh, were you? yeah, we, we went, I was so eighth grade. Was that 14, 13, 13, probably. Yeah. And there was a guy, uh, Tom, I'll, I won't put his last name on here cause he's, he's an active guy right now, but yeah, Tom, he was a young Harvard student at the time, and I didn't know it. He was a super humble guy, and I was probably really uh, a pain in the butt, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're, let's take a break. Ex- let's, let's take a, va- a break so you can really develop sure. this thought. We're talking with Vincent sure. Roberts. He's 22 years old. I, you remind me a lot of me when I was your age. I was so on fire with God. I didn't know what to do with all my my passion for the Lord, you know. But you have a beautiful um, ministry that you've boldly stepped out into, which is your podcast, Out of the Cave, which is a great name. Love the name. And uh, they, they can Thank find you. out where? Where can they find Out of the Cave? Best place is Spotify. That's or, the best or place, any, it's hosted on everything. Or any, anything, any yeah. podcast. It's on there. iTunes. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. And he's bringing uh, truth and faith and challenging uh, his generation and ours to go deeper with the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to DeepAdventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to talk to the mama bears out there. Uh, We were having a time of prayer and, and conversation, dialogue about the ministry not too long ago. And uh, they said, we gotta talk. We got to start uh, responding to the mama bears. They really love your ministry. We need to be more responsive to them. And they called them mama bears. And I'm like, what is that? Like some sweet kind of Goldilocks and the three bears kind of mama bear? What is that? And uh, the next day, though, my son Jeremiah came in. And out of the blue, just for no reason at all, he said, Dad, remember when we had a cabin in Montana, how fierce the mama bears were? I go, all of a sudden, I could feel the Holy Spirit was talking to me. He said, yeah, remember how, how you know, the, the, the male grizzlies are one thing, but you never wanted to get between a mama bear and the cubs. When you go walking in the mountains of Montana, we had a cabin up by Glacier Park, you always uh, sang or clapped your hands or blew a whistle uh, because you didn't want to sneak up on a bear. The last thing you want to do is surprise a bear. And one day, my dad was walking in the deep, deep, deep woods of those mountains, 
and he came across the clearing in the and in in the clearing a log was in the uh, across the clearing this little meadow and then he saw the log move and it was a mama bear and she stood up on her hind quarters and she started snapping her jaws and growling and my dad looks to the right and he sees the cubs and is like that's the vision when my dad got six foot four got small looked away backed out backed out and uh, was so glad that he survived that but that's the mama bears that listen to our show that are so fiercely loyal to their families we want you to go we have a new page that's been set up just for you and we have ways that you can use what we have and share it with uh, with your 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 family to bring them closer to jesus we love your fierceness and we love that you're part of our ministry so go to the mama bears page at tpadventure.com we have with us today Vincent Roberts, he's a young man that de- aspires to serve the Lord and uh, has a great, has a, has a love for truth and a love for beauty and a love for, for just, just in love with Jesus. His podcast is called Out of the Cave. Vincent Roberts, thanks for joining us on the, man, uh, on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, we were talking about your, your as, as you were journeying towards deeper faith, how, how do you say Harvard? You're from New England. How do you really say the word Harvard? Harvard, if you're from there. Harvard. You have to talk (laughs) with your teeth. You have to talk with your teeth together. Yeah, that's right. Is everybody named Buffy up there? And Chad? (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, this guy, you annoyed this guy from Harvard on that. When I moved to Texas, yeah. Well, anyway, you were. were, Yeah, I. Tell us. Yeah, this trip was, um, it was like a probably 500 mile road trip, right? And we're in the car and. At that point, I, I was a big complainer. That's something I'm definitely overcoming. But yeah, I was like, "Why are we doing this? Why are we going here? Why are we praying?" Because it was a it was a Catholic tri- retreat. So like, you know, we'd we prayed the Angelus, we'd say the Rosary, we'd have times of prayer. And I was just like, "Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that?" Why the? And I was just like a total pain in the butt. But I was attracted to this guy's character. I could just see like he was a man of faith, but I didn't even really know what what that was at the time. And yeah, his, his example to me was he was a firm leader. He, he took us running morning and was encouraging, but not, not soft on us. It wasn't like, Oh, you got this. It was like, come on, like you got, you come on, let's go. Yeah. He challenged encouraging. you, exhorted you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at the end of that trip, I was like, I want what he has. Like he has something that is incredibly attractive and his character is yeah, something that I, I want to have, you know, and that was that's the moment that it kind of turned me uh, towards towards my faith. Yeah, you know, it's like we don't have to be deep theological thinkers to lead someone to Christ. Faith is something that's caught more than it's taught, although that all that is important. Faith is like a fire, you know, that that just kind of sweet. It's like the hot embers, and so young, so men, you need to find ways to have access to these younger men, especially some of them that have not been really fathered or uh, the way they could have been. You can uncle them. Why not teach catechism class? Why not work with a youth group? Why not help with the Boy Scouts or, or teach your teach a, a coach a football team or a, or, you know, a little league a soccer team or something like that? Men need to find a way to have access. You know, here in Hawaii, it's so interesting, Vincent, because young men will come up to me and say, hey, Uncle Bear, I got a girl in trouble or Uncle Bear, you know, I, I hit punch someone out yesterday what should i do about it you know there's a there's a they they allow you to uncle them there's a respect my sister my 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 sweetheart cindy says it's amazing the company of men the way the men gather um what what so so now that when you saw this not much older than you maybe eight years older than you uh, example it kind of started a fire in your belly how did you respond to that yeah so after that moment, I, I was involved with this leadership camp that, that this was a part of. This was like the CIT trip for the leadership camp. And leading up to the leadership camp, every month we'd meet, uh, and there were some, some Catholic men who would lead this like training to be good counselors, good, good men of faith. And it was a lot about just like, like, the, like the virtues, right? So they would walk us through the different virtues. It wasn't, it wasn't like, this is how you deal with this situation well, is, as a camper, right? It was, is this program still available? It is in Massachusetts. It's since changed names. It used to be called Sebago Leadership Camp. Mm-hmm. I believe it has changed names, but yeah, it's Sebago Leadership Camp. That's that's the camp I. Uh, I was okay, about that's here. what a great concept. Okay, go on. Yeah, so 
I would, uh, I would do this and, and then I did the camp and I had an amazing experience and that just kind of set me on the path to keep finding God more and more. And by the end of high school, I, I was doing, um, this program called the edge. It was really about forming you for college, right? So forming you for, Who, who's, for behind be a good who's, who's behind that program. So there's a there's a men's center in Boston that I became familiar with called uh, Chestnut Hill Center, and it's a uh, it's run by Opus Dei, which is okay. founded by San Jose Maria Escriva. Yeah. So, so I, is I the met, edge? What, the what reason why I'm asking you is there? Can other people find this the edge in the, where they are in the, around the country, the United States, or the world? Yes, they can. Yeah, there's there's programs all over the all over the place. And it's, um, how do they find it? Is, it? is there a website or something like that they can find? It's called the Edge. There is. In Boston, it's it, the program that I did was called the Edge. But the, if you look up Chestnut Hill Center, you you can find uh, find all those resources there. Oh, cool! They're, I know there's very, all very friendly. I know the Focus Group too is very good at reaching young people. Focus is awesome campus. as well. Yeah. Okay, so tell yeah. us more. I'm just trying to find a way, Vincent, so you, people that are listening can get traction. They're you're appealing to them, but how do they start? So that's one way they can do that. Okay. Yes. So it's it's first. I think you as men of faith, we have to be good examples, right? So. Um, personally, like I've taught a catechism class down here in Dallas, a bunch of, um, at a Latin, Latin or Latin American parish, Spanish mass. Mm. And I, uh, you know, taught catechism there. I don't know. I, I saw a lot of sleepy faces, but, uh, no, they're, they're great kids. And I was there for my freshman year of college down here. Awesome. And then I also, after, after high school, I took a year off and I went and I taught for that summer in the South Bronx. And so I mentored a bunch of inner, inner city boys. And these kids came from really rough backgrounds. And that was kind of like my first adult experience, if you will. And I, I just really enjoyed mentoring these boys. So I think the first thing, it starts with us as Catholic men being good examples to other men, right? The men who are not there. And it's really it's really through cheerfulness in our character, right? Uh, on our podcast, we talked about- Cheerfulness you know, and your a character. Firm. Yeah. Cheerfulness is, is really attractive, right? If, if we're happy, if we have the gospel, we're happy people, but we're also firm. Like what we talked about, a man is, a man stands for what he believes. Like he's not, he's not wavering, but he's, he's, he's in love, right? So to speak, he's in love with our Lord and that should radiate out to other people. And he's found a cause that he's willing to stand for and will, will not be moved. A man that doesn't, that is not easily moved from uh, truth and from his convictions. We want to be flexible, but not when it comes to our convictions, it's extremely attractive. The cheerfulness, maybe not so much. I know I can be pretty annoying to people, and especially <laughs> in the mornings. My wife has a pair of socks I bought her and on the bottom when she's sitting down in the morning. It says, shh, don't talk. And the other sock says, I haven't had my coffee yet on the bottom of her socks. And I've got a coffee cup like that for her too. I'm annoyingly <laughs> cheerful. On, uh, but we're talking with Vincent Roberts. So you're saying that even at your, even in your, in your, in high school, uh, you had, you were involved in leadership. Whether you know it or not, people are following you. Depends. The question is, where are you leading them? Yeah, exactly. And we can. I think as men, we we naturally. Um, well, those of us who tend to be leaders, right? Yeah, we're leading either towards the light or towards the darkness, right? We well, can, we're all we leaders, though, dude. We're all leaders. We're That's right. Leaders. No, it's true. I think we're all yeah. called to be leaders. It's some guys just haven't some. I think some people have more of a natural tendency to to take that take that on right away. But, but I mean, we're all I mean, supposed to be leaders. people are leading people the wrong way. Definitely. Right. So, I mean, there's if you, whether you know it or not, you're leading someone somewhere. Someone's watching you. So be on the alert uh, where which way you're leading people. We'll be right back with Vincent Roberts. We're going to talk more about uh, his conversion and uh, his deep how the, he, the Lord deepened his his faith. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel, Deep, uh, the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, and push the subscribe button. Uh, you'll be notified when my Ocean Sunrise Catechisms come on every day or when a new radio show is, is posted up there. A lot of times, Cindy and I, no matter where we are on the, where we are in the world, we'll just flip on the YouTube and, and have some fun and talk with you. And there's also some trailers about our TV show. And So if you're not part of our, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you, you got to do it. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our guest today is Vincent Roberts, and we will be talking to him more about his podcast, Out of the Cave. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. 
go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe, get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Vincent Roberts. I kind of stepped on what you were saying because we were coming towards the end of our segment. When I was talking about leadership, there's there's two types of leadership. Uh, there are plenty of people that are leading people down the wrong path, and there's a lot of people that are, maybe you're just an older brother, and your younger brother is watching you. What direction are you leading that person? You may not even know that you're leading, but everyone has someone that's watching them. And so recognizing that kuleana as we say in hawaii that responsibility can take you can kind of wake you up so so you begin to do you begin to be involved in leadership at a real young age and uh, through the edge program and then how did your faith how did things evolve from there in your faith yes so for me wrestling with my faith so that i had that experience uh we talked about my my that, that pivotal, pivotal moment for me that happened right at the beginning of my freshman year right of what going that trend of, of high school that transition okay the transition year from into high school right yeah and i didn't i i was changing schools at this point too so i was trying to you know make friends and so wrestling with that and going from a private school setting to a public school setting was a, a definite yeah, change especially definitely. in massachusetts so i was immediately overwhelmed with the, the you know the outfits for one the the just the the lewd uh conversations yeah like People don't, I don't know if people really realize, but pornography runs rampant by, you know, the time you're in high school these days. It's, and it's openly discussed. It's not like a, a hidden secret thing. It's, it's almost like, uh, oh yeah, what are you watching? What are you doing? And I was really, really taken aback by that. And I remember one of the moments that really struck me was I was in a health class one time and the teacher made us all stand up. And then she said, okay, uh, who's for contraception? And then you go to one, one side of the room if you are, and one side of the room if you're not. And then I remember uh, it was kind of like split, like people didn't really know. And then it came to the abortion question. And I was the only one out of like 35 people to stand for abortion is wrong. And all these people were uh, on the other side of the room. So I was, I was definitely already split from my peers at that point. And I'm the kind of person I'm That's a little bit heavy. of heavy. You're saying in that public school that only one person stood for pro-life yeah that's well, at least scary that I knew. that's scary man yeah well the, the scarier thing is most of those people who are in that class were also in my catechism class because boston i don't know if you know is is pretty culturally catholic right so a lot of grandparents and parents push their children into the catholic churches but they're none of these people are really actually catholic and you know, a lot of my friends who you know were raised catholic and are, are not really practicing catholics at all and once they got to college their own thing and 
yeah, it's there's a really a, a real big problem, in, especially in the Catholic faith. With and the, and I think right you know when I was young, you had to go look for pornography, but now uh, men are under full on attack. And if you're not being proactive about how to defend yourself from that, it's so horrifying uh, of a of a shameful pit. Um, and I understand people get involved in that they go more and more perverted as time goes on. Um, I think the yeah. the rescue for that is confession, you know, at least one, and, and the, 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 the rescue for me, anyway, anyway, I don't know, but for me, uh, when I talk to men is if you're spending an hour with the Lord every day in prayer, you're, you don't want to miss out on that intimacy with God. You know, you don't want to trade it for something like that. And then the other thing is, um, just the confessional, but what do, what do you tell men who are, who are combating that? What do you, how do you, how do you, what do you, how do you challenge them and how do you encourage them? Yeah, no. So for me, it was, I mean, it's a demon that I struggled with in my early years and, and thank, thank God b- broke away from that. And, um, for me it was, yeah, it was prayer and confession. I remember I, I had this, this, my first confession, I, I remember hearing about this in a, in a catechism class that this was, you know, these things were mortal sins. And I had no idea before that point, uh, partially because my parents never talked to me about that stuff and th- they're more to the liberal side. So they didn't really care. I don't think, uh, in terms of just the morality of it. But was, yeah, I came to realize that that was a sin. And I had this amazing confession with uh, this priest. And it, from that moment on, I experienced God's grace in, in a huge way. I remember I was just weeping after this confession and just felt so at peace. You don't realize when you're looking at these things, you're damaging yourself, right? Yeah. You feel, it feels good, right? But you're damaging your heart and your soul. And and re- what reconciliation is, is it's, it's a freedom from that. Christ says, I will take these, these, these on, right? His burden is light. If and, we and live in Christ, you know, he takes it from us. And the sacrament of confession, I think, is so important because even people think, maybe think, well, that's a private sin. But actually, you're objectifying uh, the people that, are invo- that, that you're looking at. And you think about so many of them uh, aren't there because that was their first choice in life. You know, they, some of them may be involved in sex trafficking or drugs or, or other situations. And you're, so it's a sin against them, too, because you're contributing to their own, their own um, you know, predicament. And it's a, a sin against the dignity of your own human nature. And it also is a sin against your your future wife, or your present wife. You know, it's and it's it's a very grave thing, and yet it seems like pornography is just like, like it's just, like what color shirt are you going to wear today? Like it seems to be it's almost like that casual now, and yet it's so grave. It really is. Yeah, it's it's horrible. The what I would recommend to young guys going back, what I'd recommend to young guys who are struggling with this is first just find a friend. Right. Find somebody that you can 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 trust to 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 open up to to, you know, right. Jesus says in the gospel, right, if we if we can't confess somebody, confess to each other, right? Like we have to we have to be able to have somebody to to share this with and and then yeah, go to confession, right? If you know this is a sin and this is something that you're doing over and over and over again, just go to confession. And the second you fall, like find a confession, right? Humble yourself and go to confession. Don't wait weeks or months, right? Like like get it get back on the horse, jump right back into it. And it's a fight, right? It's we're, we're it's men, probably right? one of we're the cu- toughest battles that men face today. Yeah, it, it really is. It's and it's the first battle because it comes at you so young. These I think the average uh, exposure age is like eleven these days. It's it's and it's going younger than that, like eight at this point. So it's really really tough. And I would it's not something most men struggle with this, right? So I think we can take that stigma. Away. Way, like oh it's just you no like most men struggle with this we're, we are physical beings and we're, we're not like women right we're not just attracted to the personality and and the character of men right as men we're we're first physically we're physically oriented right so recognize that and overcome that but i recommend yeah fraternity regular confession and just trust that the, that god is he's coming to get you right he, he doesn't want you to be stuck in this if you really want to change your heart he's coming for you right he's a brother you read the gospels and he's a friend, right? He calls he calls John uh, John and what James the sons of thunder, right? He has a sense yeah. of humor. He yeah. he wants fellowship and brotherhood, so he's he's coming for you. And trust in that. But yeah, I just did Exodus ninety with a bunch of uh, a group of my close friends here in Dallas, and I know some of the, some of them, myself included, we had all of our reasons for doing it. 
I would recommend that to guys too. If you really struggle with this, there you go. Great. Breaking program. down the, yeah, you have to get rid of these. It's comfort really. We're, the reason that you're stuck in this is because you're afraid to embrace pain, right? You're afraid to embrace challenge, but you have to, that's what life is. <laughs> you have to embrace the challenge. You have to start taking cold showers, right? St. Francis, I think is it, he threw himself in a thorn bush. Thomas Aquinas uh, had to battle it too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's a struggle for all men, right? We're yeah. we're we're not alone in this, and it's like all the Augustine, saints they did right. it. Yeah, yeah, they had flesh too, right? They over Paul talks about this. It's a battle to overcome yourself, right? Your your flesh, and the flesh isn't bad, but we have to overcome ourselves. We have to master ourselves so that we can serve a greater purpose. On my podcast, uh, I had a, a doctor on, Doctor Tom uh, Thompson. He's a psychologist, and we talked about you know overcoming yourself. He wrote a book on the Rule Saint Benedict. And mm-hmm. the, the first the first practice of being a Christian is to overcome yourself, to get to that point where you, where you are commander and master, so that way you can serve a greater purpose. So, yeah, so you can serve Christ, so you can serve your purpose, so you can serve your mission, which is for God. You know, the, the older men that are listening, and um, you need to have a conversation with your sons. You have to just be right out in front with them and let them know if, you've, if you haven't ex- had to battle with this yet, if they're of confirmation age, you need to talk to them or even before that. But one of the things too is, um, and I, I, I think we have great listeners that listen to us, but if you're sitting watching a show, uh, they can be so innocuous. I mean, the shows can be just so no big deal. The commercials themselves can be so harmful now. You need to protect your young your young family from the attack of uh, the, the, the multi-gender environment that we live in and the and the and the the soliciting of the sexual solicitation that you see even in the commercials you need to protect your families and the other thing is men when you look twice at a woman your your sons see that david said i made a covenant with my eyes ask for god's power and get with other men and you can overcome that matt frad has a great program too uh in regards to purity Every single man that, that's involved in men's ministry that I know of, this is one of the battles they fight. What's interesting, Vincent, is uh, if you ask most Protestant pastors how, how has pornography affected their, their church, they'll say maybe 10% of the men have a problem with it. But for some reason, Catholic men are horrible because if you ask a Catholic priest, you'll say oh, most of them. And the reason why is because Catholic men go to confession. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the Protestants were holy. They're just not admitting it. But thank God we have that sacrament. And we have, man, if you're facing that, this is your challenge today. Get bold. Get some help. Uh, join Exodus 90. Get some other men around you to pray and get rid of that demon. We've been talking with Vincent Roberts. His podcast is called Out of the Cave. Mama Bears, find that. Share that with your young people. Vincent, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Hope we You're can a good again. man. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> welcome to the front of the. Welcome to coming to the to the vanguard of the fight and enter, entering into the fray with us. Until next week, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit, aloha you, aloha. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.